So the housing market is booming. I'm sure you've already noticed this. But is a coming collapse near? That's the big question. What most buyers don't realize is that pension funds, investment firms, and rental housing companies are buying up inventory at a record rate. I want you to take a look at Houston, Texas. 24% of all housing sales there involved an investment firm. This Wall Street money is artificially propping up the market, in my opinion. If you own a home, you're loving it. Prices are going up, right? Because by many accounts, home prices could soar another 20% just this year alone. So the question is, what's driving this surge? Well, it started, of course, with the China virus and the rush to get out of cities, mostly liberal cities, all shut down. The crime spike we are seeing across the nation is also driving this surge, too. People want the perceived safety and security of the suburbs. But all of it leads me to believe it's a false surge. The COVID scare will subside once Republicans take back control of Washington, and the big investment money could chase a new scheme at any moment. All of it is artificially propping up the market. So what's happening here? Millennials who want to buy a home can't afford one now. The Wall Street Journal actually spelled it out today. There is no way for someone in their late 20s or early 30s to compete with these yield-chasing investors lined with ultra-deep pockets. And since the young first-time home buyers can't get into their first home, what do they do? Well, of course, they rent. And that, of course, benefits the same investors who kept the young people out of their homes in the first place because the once potential buyers are now renters. Look at this example. The giant home builder, D.R. Horton, built, then sold, 124 homes in Conroe, Texas, in one fell swoop. An investment firm bought the entire neighborhood. We're talking about not just buying up apartment buildings, we're talking about buying up single family housing uh, to then use as rental properties. What can be done about it? I mean, that's, that's really the big question. Giant companies like BlackRock and Blackstone uh, who have been big investors uh, in the real estate asset class, they have deep ties to the Democratic Party. Uh, they have deep ties to the top of the Democratic Party, the establishment of the Democratic Party. So you would ask, well, why would that matter? They're just investors. They want to make money, right? What is the difference they have ties to the Democrat Party? Except the Democrat Party wants all this. They want an ultra transformation of the neighborhoods. This is what the Democrats want to transform the suburbs into liberal enclaves. Their investors in Wall Street are helping them do it, and they're getting rich in the process. But here's the other downside. Renters never take care of their home and their neighborhood like homeowners do. You see it wherever you have large rental properties or inner cities, the renters don't do a good job of taking care of those properties. What we could see, though, now because of this, is the downfall of so many neighborhoods flooded with renters. Houses will fall into disrepair, litter, cr crime surge, the same crime surge we see in the city moving into the suburbs. It all will lead us to neighborhoods in decline. So what about all this? Well, the Democrats welcome all of this because it plays into their quest to destroy the suburbs in an effort to spread traditionally liberal voters straight across the country like butter over bread. It is why they push for Affordable housing, they call it, constantly pushing for it. Listen to Joe Biden today discussing what he wants to include in his so-called infrastructure bill. The lack of affordable housing prevents people from moving to communities where there are more opportunities. So we're going to make historic investment in affordable housing, increasing and improving the housing supply by building and rehabilitating more than 2 million homes, especially in places that need more housing. Well, it all sounds good if you're uninformed and you don't understand what they really want. See, what they really want is to eviscerate suburbia. But also, we, the taxpayers, are going to pay for it all. And the big benefit to the Marxist Democrats is conservatives get overrun. And we, as conservatives, never win another election again. This is all part of Team Biden's plan to change America for the worse. Well, joining me now is editor-in-chief of Breitbart.com, Alex Marlowe. Alex, welcome to the program. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. 
you know, on the surface, it sounds great. All oh, low-income housing, have everybody head into the suburbs. But they know it doesn't work that way, don't they? No, it doesn't work that way. But what's happening here is really the confluence of some of the left's absolute favorite agenda items. Uh, first of all, they love the idea of outsourcing the cities, which are beloved to them, to the suburbs. And they want people not just to live in single family housing. Uh, they want them to have joint housing. They want them to have uh, these group homes, apartments, condo complexes. All of these are things that benefit the environmental movement. They think it's more sustainable, more green. Uh, it also sort of erodes some of the some of the the uh, aspect of the suburbs that a lot of people on the left are obsessed with, which is racial inequities, because they believe the suburbs favor people who are whiter, uh, let's be honest. And that's the sort of thing that is, of course, not true that the suburbs are just for white people. Of course, all people live in the suburbs, but the left does portray it that way, and they portray it as due to institutional racism. So all the CRT and BLM stuff, it all goes out there as well. And the solution to some of the suburbs issues is going to be uh, when the cities are emptier and not thriving is going to be increased immigration. So this is going to be what's coming next, is they're going to call for more immigration in order to fill up the cities that are starving for people. And so it's everything the left would want, and it is just something that is is really breathing down our neck at this moment. And then, Alex, of course, the ultimate benefit from this is as you move those voters, typically Democrat voters, out of the city, and now you flood suburbs with them, all of those traditionally Republican suburbs now become Democrat suburbs. So now they own the cities and the suburbs. 100% correct. The Democrats seem to move to places that are conservative and then bring their values with them, which is a huge formula for Democrats uh, to benefit because they can make some of these purple areas blue, some of these redder areas purple, and then they're just going to replace the cities with, well, they don't need to replace them for electoral votes, but if they do, it's going to be immigrants, and often those people are going to vote at least the first couple of generations for Democrats. So you're right about this. There's a huge political implication as well. It fits their policy agendas. It fits their philosophical agendas. Uh, and it also fits their desires for demographics to move the country in a bluer direction. Well, th thanks to work, you know, we're trying to do here at Newsmax what you're doing at Breitbart. We're calling attention to this because they have this so-called infrastructure bill. Um, all of this plan to eviscerate the suburbs is in this infrastructure bill as well. Now Joe Biden openly says... We're going to use reconciliation, the idea that we're going to lump this into a budget. We don't need the 60-vote uh, minimum in the Senate. We can just ram this on through. Listen to Joe Biden today. We need to invest in our people. That's why, in addition to the bipartisan infrastructure agreement that I believe we're going to get done, I'm here to make a case for the second critical part of my domestic agenda. It's a combination of parts of my American jobs plan that were essential and not included in the bipartisan infrastructure plan, as well as my American Families Plan. In Washington, they call it a reconciliation bill. You know, in one breath, he says a bipartisan bill, and then he says, let's use reconciliation, Alex. This is the unity president? Yeah, that's exactly right. And he has not shown any compromise with Republicans at all. There's not a single issue that he's been able to compromise with Republicans on. And it's certainly not going to be this one. So it is something that he's going to continue to look for ways to get something through. But he's got a major issue here, which is that there's no upcoming victories for Joe. And with the gas prices going up, with inflation, what it is, with a, a, a we're seeing it in, in things like food. We're seeing still supply chain issues uh, that are coming through that we're not getting a lot of electronics aren't available to people, which slows the economy to a degree. Service sector seeing a lot of struggles. He's going to need a policy win soon, and I don't know how he's going to get it, and that's a big issue for him. Yeah. Yep, I don't think he gets one soon, as long as Mitch McConnell stands firm and says we've got a battle on our hands, but I don't have much faith in that happening either. But uh, I know you'll be watching, Alex Marlowe. You guys over at Breitbart are great. I appreciate you coming on tonight. Thanks again for having me. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.